Lab Code Agents Podcast. Lab Code Nation, welcome back to another episode of the Lab Code Agents Podcast. And evidently, I didn't get enough uh, technology lately that I am just uh, filling the coffer with a bunch of tech experts who have some tech platforms that are value to our audience. And so we're going to continue down this trend with what I hope will be another insightful conversation with someone who has a, a checkered past, a, a strong history of, of working in the internet and technology industry, uh, in this case, since the late 90s. And I'm, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper here because this is what his bio says, but uh, the, our guest today became fascinated with radio frequency identification technology. Yeah, that went right over my head too. Um, and that's part of what we're going to be talking about today, as well as uh, some of, of his experience in the technology world and how you can use it for networking and lead gen and data ethics, 3D printing, those kind of things. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Mr. Peter Lemberg. How are you, my friend? Ooh, wow. What an intro. You're making me blush, Jeff. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's too much. Yeah, no, I love technology. That's for sure. And, uh, but mostly because, uh, because it's practical, because I'm lazy and because we, uh, it, it, it makes me available for the things that I love to do instead of the things that I have to do. Yeah. So. Best description ever. I love technology because I'm lazy. That's great. <laughs> that's fast. Fantastic. So, so Peter, let's assume our audience has never heard of you. They don't, they don't, they don't know who you are. Uh, let's tell our audience about yourself. Like how, where do you come from? Where do you live? What part of the nation are you in or world? And uh, you know, what led you to where you are today? What's your, what's your past look like? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, yeah, I, I became um, fascinated with uh, computers when I was uh, eight years old. My, my dad uh, bought a, a home computer, which was mind you uh, a tape deck uh, computer, right? So no floppies, no, no floppy disks, no nothing, just a tape with that had that held some data. And then he threw me a book and said, here's a book on how to code and, uh, have fun if you, if you want, and otherwise keep playing the games that are on the computer. So, uh, so I played around a bit and then that led quickly to, uh, to the internet, uh, in, in 1996, which, which was my teens. And I started fooling around with, uh, kind of the, the local, uh, eBay, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, so at that time I was I was uh, hustling on eBay. I was an internet hustler. I, I'd buy things and sell things and and make a little bit of money, and it paid for my one of my vacations and uh, and later on uh, for a car. So it was good fun. Um, but then I, I kind of wait, wait, a minute, um, wait a minute. What car did you buy? Uh, <laughs> a Fiat Tipo, which I'm sure nobody has ever heard of on this side of the world, uh, but it, it was black. <laughs> Very cool. And it yeah. had Ferrari style uh, uh, wheels. So that, that was kind of like uh, the, the mark, marquee uh, thing there. Uh, but yeah, um, it, I felt like king of the world, right? So I earned it myself uh, with, uh, with some, some hustling and that, that was the most important thing. But then I also uh, got the feedback from my dad that I couldn't keep hustling on, on the attic. And he said, go do something for real. Um, and I, um, I got an opportunity to take over an old fashioned retail store. Uh, and it was at the time where a digital photography was, was coming up. So everybody was still on cameras with film uh, and there were only three digital models. They were insanely expensive, but I was fascinated by the fact that, that you could uh, hold that, that magical moment of your, of your photo uh, immediately. Uh, you could see it on a screen right now. If you give somebody a camera with a film, they say, where's the screen where can I see the photo. And, you know, at that time it was just normal that you would project, that you would bring in your film, you wait, two or three days if you didn't have money like I did. And then, then you got your photos and then you had to, to figure out if it, if it was worth it, yes or no. So the magic, the mystery, that's now um, uh, been uh, all replaced by, by cameras. So I rode that wave as, as photography became hip again in uh, the end of the 90s, um, but also combined with uh, one of the first to offer online and offline shopping in the Netherlands uh, as, a, as a, uh, an online hybrid model. So um, where lots of big retailers today still are struggling to figure out what to do, I immediately thought, no, this has to be one and the same store. Online and offline has to be the same experience. If you, if you have a card online, why can't you get it offline? And why can't you get offline support for something that you buy online? And all those things. 
I was uh, on a small scale, it was a lot easier to, to roll out. And with my back, uh, background in, in software development, I was able to develop the first things myself. So that was good fun. Um, but I got bored with the fact that I had to um, sell products that weren't mine. I, had, I, was only, I was limited to what Canon, Sony, and Samsung uh, were producing. So uh, I had a chance to, an opportunity to sell uh, the store I did, and then joined a 3D printing company called Shapeways. And a couple of things were new. One of the things was that this was backed by venture capital. And I always thought you had to go to the bank uh, to get money and get a loan and you know, basically put everything on red. Everything that you own is, in the, is, in the, uh, is on the line. Uh, and then all of a the sudden, there's this world where you can get, you sell a piece of your company, you get millions of dollars, and then you can spend it all. And if, if all goes wrong, then nothing happens. That was weird to me. That was really, really weird. <laughs> it's a great so way to wanted, describe it. Yeah, well, I wanted to know everything about it. So I, I, I joined the company when it was just 30 people. Um, and through that ride, uh, I moved to New York from, from the Netherlands. So I started in supply chain, did that for two years, and then moved to New York to head up the uh, e-commerce uh, business development and sales department because that was my background. And uh, through the, the journey, we raised over 100 million in capital. And, and uh, long story short, this company is now going uh, direct listing through a SPAC. Uh, so not only did I get the, uh, the quick uh, rundown of how venture capital works, but now also um, they're going, they're, they're doing the SPAC thing, which is all the rage uh, these days. So um, that was uh, Shapeways 3D printing. Yeah, and um, um, I uh, left the company in 2018. Uh, to go do something for myself again. Uh, and that turned out to be Mobilo. That is what we are definitely going to end up on today because Mobilo is obviously something that can absolutely be used in our industry. But I have to, I have to ask you some questions first. First of all, let me just say this. Uh, I've been to Europe a few times. Holland is absolutely my favorite country. Um, Amsterdam, of course, is a wonderful city. But the people are the nicest people, probably the most educated, the most eloquent, the most well-spoken people that I have experienced in the world. So let me just, let me just say that to you and, and, and your heritage because uh, uh, I appreciate that culture um, compared to some other countries over in Europe, which you're probably very well aware of. Uh, the people in Holland are awesome. Oh, thanks, man. I yeah, appreciate that. Absolutely. So, so, so now you move to the States. Um, are you here for the duration, you think? Are you, are you, are you now on a... And now an American, you, you, you know, tried and true, or you think you're just here temporarily and you'll head back? No, I, was, I, I certainly feel um, like I belong uh, in New York City. Uh, it, it was I, I, the first time that I went to New York was uh, 2011. I was here for just for a couple of days. And immediately as we as we uh, set foot on the ground, I thought, oh, wow, it, it just feels like everything moves. The world moves a little faster. Uh, turns faster everything goes faster in new york city and i felt right at home so i felt that the cultural differences between the netherlands and new york uh, were small i actually felt right at home because people are direct they are they tell you like it is and you know that take it or leave it but that's the way it is and and that's that's something that i can work with uh, i am not good in beating around the bush we we say things as it is and and that's that and then Either we become good friends or we won't, and that's also fine. Uh, so yeah, um, lots of inspirational uh, stories here. Every um, so, I, I think one of the, the the key things that you you start to realize when you feel at home is that a lot of spots in the city will uh, have a story now. So uh, something happened when I was over over at Park Avenue South and Twenty Eighth Street, and something else happened when I was uh, in this restaurant in Meat Packing, and so those are the things. And, and the other day, I, I bump into people that I know on the street, you know, <laughs> that's, that's just crazy to me that that happened in just a couple of years time. So I feel right at home. And uh, we have no plans to leave. Um, I'm married, I have a little a little daughter, uh, 16 months old. And uh, yeah, we're having a good time. So, uh, so far, so good. Awesome. Yeah, great timing with uh, with the COVID world last year, too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I would have gone straight back to work if not for COVID. And now I've got, we, we went through this magical six months of, of uh, seeing every, every single minute uh, of, of the new family. So yeah, I know that's been the silver lining of it all. Very cool. Very cool. So, all right. So let's fast, now let's fast forward back to, to where we are today and, and, and you founded a new company. 
And, you know, so when you were, you were at Shapeways and, you know, you're kind of looking ahead and trying to figure out where you want to go. You said, you know, you did something for yourself. Where did the vision come from to, to create what you've now created? Like what, what was the need that you saw or, you know, what, what is it getting inside your head? What were you thinking that led you to where we are today? Um, a couple of things that I learned over, over time. One is that um, if you're not really adding value to a product, uh, you're not able to charge a fair price for it. And if you're not able to charge a fair price, you'll always be uh, ending up going, uh, competing against other products that are uh, similar and therefore you won't make money. And if you don't make money, you can't advertise it, you can't spend it on growth, you can spend it on product development. So one of the things that I thought was really, really important is I have to do something that really adds value. And how do you know? Well, you create an MVP, you show it to your friends and if they don't respond, uh, or, or don't interact, then you know you've not created anything with value. And trust me, my family and friends, they have seen a lot of things that I've tried and uh, a lot of it failed. And then all of a sudden you come up with something and then there's interest, uh, you instantly know. So adding value to a product, I think, is number one for a lot of reasons. One, uh, being able to build on it later and two, um, making some, some, some money with it so you can put that into further development and actually growing the business. Uh, so solve something that is worth solving and uh, worth uh, um, for somebody to pay for it to be solved. And that also lets, leads me to number two. I once met um, uh, Justin Kahn, uh, only super brief conversation, but this, this is the person that started Twitch uh, and then sold it to, um, to YouTube for, uh, for a little less than a billion. I think it was 970 million or something. That's all? But, you know, yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. He's just, he's just another rich kid now. So uh, that's actually his, those are his words. So he said, I'm, I'm totally out of touch with the world at the moment as I am. Um, I've become so rich that, that, that it's difficult to, to be grounded. But one of the things that he uh, realized in the years after is that for consumer products, you just have to keep on throwing things against the wall and then see if it sticks time and time again. And you might have to throw a thousand things at the wall before you find something. But if you solve something for a business, it's instantly uh, worth something. Because if you solve it, and uh, they'll pay you for it because it's a business. It's a business case. You, you put it against um, uh, how big is the problem that you're solving and what is the problem costing me right now. And then you can have a good discussion about it. So that always stuck with me um, from, from that meeting. Um, and a post seminar that he, he gave here in New York City. So that was a uh, thing number two that was in my, in my head. And then um, I have a lot of um, experience with, uh, in photography with large format printers. So the, the, uh, the image side of things, the uh, transition from uh, digital to, to physical. Also with 3D printing, you draw something up on your computer uh, you print it out and it so it all has to do with the uh, the border line between a software and hardware you you need both uh, for this for this product and it makes it for me it makes it super interesting uh, just plain hardware um, cool um, but not super sexy uh, just plain software interesting but it's just another app uh, and as and i wanted to do something uh, that that had to do with with both sides of that of that world so wherever uh, digital and and physical world cross over uh, that was on my uh, that was on my list so uh, coming back from uh, from a trade show uh, the last trade show i went to in 2019 in, in detroit um, was a i was doing some consulting uh, for a 3d printing company and i came back with a stack of 90 paper business cards and um, jeff you you have a drawer somewhere i know it I know you have. No, I, well, and it's funny that you say this. I've hated business cards for probably uh, before they went out of style, which they're probably still in. People, because I go to a lot of events and people ask me all the time, can I have your business card? I'm like, yeah, it's called Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, go find me, right? Or yeah, I guess, obviously you have this, but I don't have Mobilo. Um, and so yes, carry on. Because I hate business cards. I've trashed them. I used to have books. You know, those little books where you mm -hmm. like a, like a, like that you would like a picture book, but it was a business card book. It's like, what? That's so stupid. It makes no sense. Forget going. No, totally agree. I mean, business card don't make sense. And I was even 
you know, I, I took this, that, that stack of 90 business cards at the end of the day and I, I walked back to my hotel, it was 11 p.m. And they were sitting there on the corner. And I can vividly remember sitting in uh, behind this little desk in this hotel room, looking at that stack of business cards and the, the cards looking back at me, like nothing's going to happen, right? Until you do something with them. I also knew that if I wouldn't follow up, that also nothing would happen. Everybody would have forgotten about me in a couple of days. And, and that's uh, the end of the, of, the, of the trade show. Nothing happened. So I thought, why hasn't this been solved? So you start to look at apps or scanning apps or, or why, don't, why, aren't, why aren't we connecting on LinkedIn? And you, you just said it, like find me on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever your preference is. And uh, you know, even I had somebody the other day in a coffee shop asking me for my Snapchat, you know, <laughs> all good and well, but you know, that doesn't help me because nothing happens after that too, right? We could connect it and then what? You share cat photos and that's it. So it doesn't help as a real sales professional. It doesn't help somebody uh, that wants to stay connected. You know, uh, Ryan Serhant uh, from S Selling Serhant. I, I recently read that book. I'm, um, and it, you know, follow, follow, uh, follow up, follow through, and follow back. You know, those are those are his words and his strategy of of, of staying in touch. So how is technology going to help me do that? LinkedIn doesn't do it. Facebook doesn't do it. So I thought, okay, that's. But that's what's wrong with business cards. They're not digital. N nothing of the alternatives, no app is going to help me follow up. So that has to be fixed. Um, and coincidentally, I'd done research on RFID, you know, the radio frequency identification uh, uh, that you just uh, spoke about. And uh, because I was, I was so fed up and tired with all those RFID cards in my wallet, you have one for the gym, you have one for your WeWork. You have one for the subway. You have one for the train. You have, you know, there's there's so many of these cards in your wallet. Why do I have so many cards? And why can't the chips are are super small? Why can't they put five chips or ten chips in one card? And I can switch or through an app or whatever. So um, I, I got some hacker equipment to copy cards and and try to to read cards and just figure it out myself because I I, I was I didn't like that. But then. I learned a lot about RFID. And so I also figured out that our phones are very capable of scanning tags. It do doesn't always happen, but uh, because the, the tags have to be formatted in a certain way. So that's why your keys and your phone in, in the same pocket will, will be fine. Uh, but if you, if you program an RFID chip in a certain way, you, the only thing you have to do is you have to tap it on, on your phone and it can trigger some sort of response. So I thought that's it. A business card with a chip inside, tap it on your phone, boom, and I can share my contact details. It's a lot fancier uh, than paper business card. It solves the problem that I, you know, I don't want to look for an app. If I meet you, Jeff, I don't want to say, hey, let's both pull out our phones and, and start searching for LinkedIn or whatever, because then the conversation has gone. Uh, all those distracting um, uh, notifications pop up and uh, an email or from a mad customer or whatever, you know, it's nothing in, in, in that moment is going to help me. So I need to stay in the conversation. So I want a, a card with a, with a chip, tap it on the phone and bring back that magic. Because what I saw when I created the first version is I tapped my card on a phone and I saw stars in the, uh, in the eyes of the other person. And they just said, what happened now? You tap a card on my phone and you're, and all of a sudden wirelessly, your details popping up on screen. That's nuts. It's crazy. I love it. So all the trust and belief and fun that we lost in the business card when they became out of fashion, like you just mentioned, is now back because the magic is back. You tap it on the phone and something triggers, something happens. It makes you look cool. It's you're in the game. I love it. And so you're carrying, so as a user, I'm carrying around a card. Yep, just one. So when somebody says, "Here's where's my business card, I pull this out, say, I'm not giving this to you. Pull out your phone, tap it on. Is it, is it kind of like a QR code? It, it does have a QR code on the back. And the QR code and the tap, the RFID function, they do the same thing. Because um, to be honest, uh, Apple only allowed this from phones uh, end of 2018 and newer. So uh, there are still a lot of phones out there that don't have NFC, uh, and therefore we we put a QR code on the back. So you know if you haven't if you've gone to dinner in the last year, you know how to use QR code. Uh, 
Correct. Yeah, exactly. And this is compatible across, uh, but you know, not just Apple, but also Android and whatnot. Yeah, Android has been in the uh, NFC uh, game for a lot longer. I, I I ran into somebody with a phone from 2016 and put the card against the back of the phone, and it works. And this is not just a business card functionality. Uh, it can also serve as like a link tree or a beacon, right? Um, to where it's a, it's, a, it's a hub for your social profiles or website or whatever, right? Absolutely. So um, it's lead gen tool. Tell us about that because I think the concept and I want to, I want to come back to asking you how you're different because this isn't necessarily new. We've heard about this. Um, like I used a platform called Blink for a while. It's not a physical card. It's a digital card, right? And, but I have to share it with them. So I, I want to know what the differentiation is. Actually, you know what, let's do that first. And then I'll go back to the other question. So tell me, why is Mobilo, what makes it different? What differentiates it from a Blink, for example? Or you probably know your competitors better than I do. Uh, what is the differentiating qualities here um, for your platform? Yeah, well, the, the basic thing is that an app is not cool. I mean, everybody has an app for something. Uh, and it's just, it, we did research and, and the business card is not only practical, it's not only um, uh, a sales um, uh, optimization tool. It's not only for uh, productivity, but it's definitely something more than that. It is a token. It is a, um, a, an icon of, of, of a representation of your business, of who you are. Uh, so it has to have some of that, that, that represent, representative um, um, magic, right? The first time you got your business cards, a long, long time ago, when you looked at them, it, it had your name on it and the title and then the logo of the company. And it really felt special because you, it was a confirmation of, of your position and your, your first job. And, and that, that, that magic that, of course, it's gone with time, but we bring that back by putting it on a physical card uh, that has a chip inside. So I think the first, first thing is that apps are not that super cool. Then the second thing is that apps are a distraction. So like I just mentioned, when you and I meet and, and I say, okay, let me open up my app with my QR code and my digital business card. Uh, before I find the app, um, it's, it's a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And it's a long time in a conversation to not say anything to each other, stand next to each other while you find your app, while you're distracted, while the Facebook uh, notifications are popping up, while your Slack messages are, are, are streaming in. And, you know, it's not something that you want to do. So the other person said, well, 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 let me find you on LinkedIn. Well, and then there you go. Momentum gone. Versus simply pulling out that card from your, um, uh, from your wallet, tapping it on their phone, and that's it. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about the, uh, the functionality a, a little bit, um, which, you know, so again, the digital business card side of this, I assume is fairly simple. Tap the card. It drops the contact, then you can then save it to your phone, correct? Yes. Pretty simple. So I think a lot of people have had experience with that. If you haven't, um, I'm just going to say it, get with the times um, and definitely check this out. Uh, but number two, let's talk about the, the social profile aspect of it. So what happens, because that's a big thing. I have a beacons page, right? I'm building out another web page, which is like a one-stop shop for all the things I have going on. But even if you don't have websites and multiple businesses, you should, you're just a real estate agent, right? Not just, but you are a real estate agent. You probably have a Facebook profile. You probably have a LinkedIn. You probably have an Instagram. You might have a TikTok. You might have a YouTube, right? You might have a website. Um, if, so if you use this as, a, as your hub, what happens? So first of all, you create your hub. You put your links to each one in it, I assume. Pull out your business card. They tap it. What do they get? Well, it's funny that you say that. I think one of the, the first uh, few friends that I used as a, as a, as a test, uh, test case and get feedback from was uh, also a real estate agent here in New York. And he said, well, to be completely frank and honest with you, Peter, I don't want to share my Facebook and Instagram because nobody's going to buy a house from my Facebook or Instagram or whatever. What I really want is, is, is their contact details. I want to build out my database warm everybody up with an email every now and then and make sure that I'm top of mind when they're ready to pull the trigger or looking for something that they think that I can help them with. So I want to establish myself as an authority. 
of knowing certain areas really well, knowing what's going on, what's coming up and being ahead of the game. So I really wanna build my personality, my image, and then I'm gonna um, uh, make sure that I am in control of the conversation and can reach out whenever I want, either through an email blast or, or text message or, or whatever personal conversation there needs to happen to, to keep the relationship warm. So he said, I wanna share my contact details, but I'd rather have theirs. So we built a lead generation mode. And the lead generation mode flips the script. It just turns everything around. So now I, I, I meet you, I tap my card on your phone, Jeff, and what comes up is a small contact form. And the contact form I can customize, but usually it asks for your name, your phone number and email address. So the promise here is that I will ask you, Jeff, can you fill this out for me? And then hit submit, then I'll send you a text message with my contact details. So that's that's the reward. So yeah, I'm asking you for your contact details with the promise that I'm going to send you mine. But I'm asking you to put this information into the system. And then the moment you hit OK, you do get a text message with my uh, contact details, fully automated. But I also get a text message with your contact details. And automatically that gets synced to my CRM. And if you don't have a CRM, you, you hit up through Zapier and you throw it into MailChimp or any other of the email tools that you have. Or if you have an open house, you use this to collect all the data from the people uh, that have visited. And then you can follow up with a click of a button. You have all of them in your, um, in your database now. So you can start keeping them warm, sending them offers, sending them inspirational emails and, and really, really staying in control of the conversation. You check the open rates, the click rates and people that are very active, you gotta give them a call and follow up, follow through, follow back. And that's how you close more deals. So we've basically built some of the cool things of a, of a CRM that are way too complicated in, in the big Salesforce environments of this world into this business card. So we're also referring to ourselves as a social CRM because it, it just fills the gap between LinkedIn and Salesforce where we are uh, offering tools to follow up, but also keep it easily usable in a social setting, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. I mean, that's a really cool tool. So, ba so basically, so how does that work? Um, it, are these separate tools or are these all in one type of thing? So the lead gen versus the digital business card versus the social profile hub? You can easily switch through the app. So I always um, sketch a scenario where you're, uh, you have this, this C-level executive that flies around the world for three meetings a week. Uh, that he or she will, will turn on the business card mode and just share contact details and be cool and just be remembered and stand out because that's, that's function number one. Then if, you, if you're, if you're uh, in a in real, real life networking event or I've also done this uh, through um, coffee events, uh, virtual coffee events or virtual hangouts with 30 people <laughs> or through a presentation, you, pure, you switch in the app the card from business card mode to lead generation mode. And you use this QR code on screen in a video call. Everybody scans it, shares their contact details with you and pop, 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 pop. I've even seen orders coming in during a video call uh, after a, a, a presentation. And that, that's, just, that's just, seeing that happen, man, that's just really, really cool. So what are you sharing in the presentation? Just a QR code of, of some sort yep. or? Exactly. I just key, I hold up my card, or there's a, a backup QR code in the app in case you didn't uh, bring the card or or lost the card. Uh, there's always an, a, a backup, and on a video call, a QR code works really, really great. That's fascinating. All right, so that's pretty awesome. So the digital business card is the basic piece of this. And by the way, folks, this is all included. Um, the lead gen is pretty awesome. I mean, that's a great way to say, "Give me your information," and the fact that it integrates. Uh, just makes life so much easier, uh, which means you're not missing out on those people that you met and you're like, damn, two months later, I should have put them in my CRM, right? Uh, because now you just found out that they're buying a home because you weren't dripping on them, right? Now you have that opportunity. Well, let me go back to the other question. So, uh, and I am interested. So when you said that that agent said, I'm not selling homes on Instagram or Facebook, I'm going to vehemently disagree with him. Uh, because we've grown a massive business as a result of our presence on social media. And it's just because of the connection. You make a connection, it's authenticity, and it's we're not selling anything. Um, it's just people follow, people like, people want to work with, period. It's that simple. 
Uh, so I'm a big fan of sharing my social profiles and showing my and, and, and growing my social presence. And I teach realtors all the time. I say, listen, when you're sitting down with a, with a new client, a new buyer or a new listing, you're going to sit down with that form. It's a listing agreement or a buyer's agreement, right? Why is it, why is not one of the first things you're doing every time you're sitting down with a client besides getting their contact information is becoming their friend or a follower on social media? Because that's the way, because some of these people are going to be long-term nurture leads, right? A lot of them are going to ignore your emails and your texts, but a lot of them are on Instagram and Facebook scrolling. So if you're showing up, guess what? You're just always reminding them what you are. So this is a great feature. I love the social profile hub. And so let's just say, you know, I, I'm using that feature. So that feature is important to me. And, and so again, I'm telling realtors, you're going to sit down with a, pers a prospective client, you get out your card and say, here's all my social profiles, go follow me. Let's stay in touch that way, right? Um, when they tap it, what does it do? Does it pull up a page with links to go to each one? Or what, what does it show? What, what shows on the user's end, on the other, on the other end? Right, and, and your, um, so the, the personal landing page puts a step, so it's called Social Profile Hub. I think we're gonna rebrand it soon to personal landing page. Uh, but it does the same thing. It puts a step in between saving the contact details. So when I tap my card on your phone, now with this mode selected, a personal landing page shows up. And it's something that looks like um, your LinkedIn page, but with your own um, with your own branding. So for larger, well, small to large companies, we develop a completely custom-made personal landing page. So for we've working with a realtor team of 17 people, um, they uh, approached us, said, Peter, can you make us a custom landing page? Yes, we can. So we built a sort of a framework completely on brand with all of your socials that you'd like to show, uh, a quick video about what your, uh, what your group is about with uh, maybe even hot listings uh, on there. Uh, but you'll see a dynamic part that changes per person. So if this team is 17 realtors, um, everybody will have their own um, uh, headshot, their own name, title, contact details, and it has a button, save contact details, but you can also scroll down and see what the social channels, and you can see a video or a short about us uh, text message or anything basically that you'd like to share there. So we're just building you a custom personal landing page that puts one step in between saving the contact details. And the next step is of course that you ask them to push that button and save the contact details or go to one of your socials and follow you, check your guide, check your, uh, your content out over there. I love it. I mean, yeah. And again, everybody, everybody who's listening has heard me preach about this kind of stuff. Uh, this is, this is valuable. This is the kind of stuff you want. Uh, it's more than just the business card, but that's valuable in and of itself. The lead gen piece of it is pretty amazing. Uh, and then of course the, the obviously sharing your social profiles uh, you can also, oh, by the way, link to any URL. Uh, so that's another feature of this. So if you are, in fact, promoting a certain website or uh, you have a link to you know, a presentation or you know, a sign-up form or something like that, you can use it for that purpose as well, which is phenomenal for even an event. If you're at a networking event, you're like, yeah, you should check this out. We've got this event coming up here. Go, read, go check it out. Here's the registration page. Boom. Just hold your phone up. And and oh, by the way, and, and you start to see these things, you guys also have uh, the technology with the little uh, little circle guy that you attach to the back of your phone. I don't even know what the hell you call that. Uh, you have a key fob, same concept, I assume, right? Um, tell us a little bit about that. What is that little circle guy called that you put on the back of your phone? The smart button is a, is a, is a small chip that you put on the back of your phone so um, it, just, it just sticks it just sticks, it just to sticks. The back. yeah it's yeah. a sticker mm -hmm. back of the phone that's it tap your uh, tap the other phone against it and done so where some uh, people don't don't like to bring a big stack of business cards and this just replaces this with one business card there's also uh, a group of people that have asked us to develop something that doesn't require a business card but it's always with them so a sticker from the back of your phone or a key fob on on your keychain uh, is a great, great uh, alternative to um, to have something with you that always works. Can you brand those uh, smart buttons? 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's a minimum quantity. I think currently it's 50 pieces, but but it's certainly possible. Yeah, for sure. I mean, think about that real. Think about that real estate community. Uh, if you have the, this is the future. This is where everybody's going to go. So you be out ahead of it because this is fairly new technology, and you go get these as a swag item that actually has a great purpose that is going to be perpetual. We're always looking for something to give away that's going to have staying power, right? You know, we're always giving away pins and, and koozies and that sort of junk, right? Business cards that end up in the trash. Give them something that they're going to hold on to. Uh, it's better than a key fob. It's better than a keychain because it's it's on the one thing that is on our hips pretty much 24 seven. And most of us sleep next to it too. Um, it, nothing better. That's what, what great marketing is that? I mean, um, I think that's a, a fantastic idea. And I think people should look into this kind of stuff. The key fob, of course, also makes sense. It's a great closing gift uh, for clients. Th think about that um, because it, you know, obviously keychains are a popular thing nowadays, you know, with realtors, it's an obvious gift. So um, is there anything else that I missed here about what else Mobilo can do for, for the user? I... No, I think we've covered uh, we've covered everything else. Uh, obviously, the, um, the 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 automation part uh, is where you know we we loop back to the beginning. Technology um, solving things for us that that allow us to focus time on 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 things that we love to do instead of we have to do. So um, incorporating this into your your daily habits, your flow, your connecting when you're connecting with other people will just simply save your time because you can automate steps and follow-ups and, and that really starts uh, the conversation and makes it manageable to stay in touch with all the people that you meet. Because I really do come across a lot of people that have that drawer with 2000 business cards that they haven't follow up with, followed up with in the last couple of years. And it's, it's so, it's just lost. I mean, all those, those contacts, you, how many houses could you sell if you meet 2000 people? That's what you lost in the last couple of years. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. I love it. Uh, okay, so uh, we've probably got some listeners that are thinking to themselves, this is incredible. How do I learn more? How do I connect with you, Peter? Uh, what, uh, what is the answer to that question? Yeah, simple. Send me an email, Peter, and it's, it's, it's spelled a little differently. So P-I-E-T-E-R at mobilocard.com. Uh, if you just want to reach out, want to have, uh, have some questions, you want to have a demo, um just reach out and we'll have a chat and then um uh, friendly and uh, and of course uh, we'll we'll help you um figure out if this is something that could work for you uh otherwise go to the website you'll find plenty of uh, of information there um and uh and i would say have a look i think uh, i think it's going to benefit your uh, your day to day a lot that is awesome. The uh, website is mobilocard.com. M-O-B as in boy, I-L-O card.com. I assume we can find you guys on social uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, we, we focus on LinkedIn. Uh, we're a professional networking tool. Um, so yes, we're active on Instagram and, and Facebook as well, but most of our content lives on, uh, on Facebook. Sorry, uh, on, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, we have a nice blog with uh, like the top 10 uh, weirdest business cards in the past, you know, and <laughs> funny things as well. It's not all business. Uh, I mean, we, uh, that's what I brought from Europe. You, you, there's also a life next to work. So uh, um, yeah, have some fun with our product. That's fantastic. Peter, this has been uh, really uh, enlightening. Uh, I think there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of agents out there, believe it or not, that maybe have never even heard of this technology. And uh, listen, folks, this is a way to create just added, first of all, efficiency, uh, because listen, if you're carrying around paper business cards, you might as well go ahead and, um, you know, uh, go out to the barn and, and, and saddle up your horse to ride to work too, uh, because you're living in the stone ages. So go ahead and get out of those stone ages and move on to the future. And uh, this is one of those ways. And clearly, this is more than just a digital, uh, you know, a digital way to share contact information. So much more than that. It's more than just a digital business card uh, with all of the functions that it has. So this is cool, Peter. I'm really glad that we uh, got the opportunity to interview you and talk more about this and learn more about it. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you offline 
Uh, I have some questions for you as well, and I hope that our audiences do, do as well. So mobilocard.com, go check them out. Peter, thank you so much for uh, your time today. Thanks for having me. Podcasts.